going to give it another minute before I get started. See if anybody else hops on. But I will go ahead and do my little spiel I do before every live. Um, as you can see, I have a dual screen. Uh, that is so you can see me at both my sewing and my workstation. So um, before we get into that, my name's Julia. Um, I am an educational designer for ThermaWeb on their fabric side. And I also have a blog called Inflorescence Designs and I have that linked in the description if you're interested in checking it out. You can find not only my ThermaWeb projects there, but I do a lot of blog hops and other tutorials and fun stuff. So you can check those out whenever you'd like. Um, I told you before I have a dual screen. Uh, so when I'm actually where you see my little donut, when I'm over there, I cannot see my computer screen. So if you make a comment um, or a question, I can't see it until I come back to my computer. Uh, but when I do come back, I'll do a quick peek, see if there's anything pressing that needs to be answered. Um, and if I happen to miss something, uh, I will go back through at the end of this live and answer any questions and tag you in them so that you get your answers um, by the end of the night or by tomorrow morning, depending on where you are. Um, so anyway, we're going to get started. Um, it's been a few minutes, so I'm going to go over to my other screen and we'll get started. Tonight we are making, it probably won't really fit on the screen because it is pretty big, but we are making a t-shirt super soft pillow form cover. It is meant, as you can see, it's meant for an 18 inch pillow and it is quilted and it's, again, it is so soft. I absolutely love t-shirt material. I still use Jersey cotton sheets. They are my ultimate favorite. Um, so this is what we're making and products that we're using tonight include this easy tea stabilizer. Uh, I am using white. Thermoweb also has black for dark fabrics. So if you're, you have dark uh, t-shirts, um, as of right now, the white is out of stock, but they're working on getting it in stock, but the black is in stock. If you're itching to get started on something using easy tea stabilizer. We are also going to be using some basting adhesive and this material right here. I have two pieces. Um, this is their stitch and sew fleece and I have two pieces because I am actually going to show you how to use their easy seam tape. Um, I have a lot of scraps and this works great to put those scraps together, especially for something like a, a pillow form or a pillow cover, or this, this is also great for wall hanging. Um, I've used it in uh, quilts as well. So we're gonna use this tonight. So we're gonna get started. Now I already have my t-shirt cut I did a lot of the pre-cutting ahead of time because it does take up a lot of space. But here is, this is not a cut t-shirt, but I just wanted to go over how I cut my t-shirt. So to make an 18 inch pillow cover, you have to have about an 18 inch width t-shirt. I do not, I am using my daughter's t-shirt. So she is, I believe this is like a youth, this is an extra large youth and it doesn't quite make it to 18 inches. So tonight I will be adding some additional fabric to it. However, if you are using a t-shirt big enough, you can make your entire front of your pillow, your t-shirt. But what I did is I 
first I cut off my sleeves. So I would cut off my sleeves and then I would actually end up probably, yeah. So I cut off my sleeves and I cut off, this is a very well used worn t-shirt, very super soft. And then I cut off this on the bottom too. And actually one t-shirt can make two pillows um, because we're only using one side of it. So if you have a, a t-shirt from like a school or some kind of event and you want the decoration or the screen printing from that, you can use, if there's one on the front, you can use that. And if there's one on the back, you can make that into something else. So once you've cut off the arms, you'll need to cut down the sides. And to do that, I just laid my t-shirt material as flat as I can. I mean, it's gonna be a little wonky because it is a stretchy knit kind of material. Um, and then I just cut down each side. And then what I'm left with is essentially a sleeveless, one piece on one side, one piece on the other. So then that's where you kind of have to work with it to see what size you want. Um, like I said, if your t-shirt's big enough, you can make it out of one. Essentially just cutting your t-shirt down to size to get the most out of it. So I'm not gonna cut this one up. This is my daughter's other shirt. She literally wears tie-dye like every day. <laughs> and she made this too. And the, the material we're using tonight, she made that one as well. So, like I said, I already have mine cut. <laughs> it's right here. And I'm going to give it a good little press because it does tend to warp. It kind of rolls up on the edges where you cut it. And we just want to have it nice and flat. So my iron is just on a high heat setting. And I have it on high heat because of the first product we're going to use requires high heat. And that is the EZT stabilizer. It uses high heat. Is going to press this out nice and flat and I try not to stretch it it does tend to it, it will stretch and I actually noticed before we got started it mine did stretch a little bit because I had already pre-cut my easy tea stabilizer and it's a little small but that's okay um, because we are making this slightly larger than 18 inches because then we will trim it down and the reason I do that is because we are going to quilt it. And sometimes when quilt, quilting, it can um, stretch or pull and skew your fabric. And it, you want it to be able to trim down to the right size you need. So what I have here is the Easy T Stabilizer. It's got an adhesive side, which is really rough on one. And the other side's nice and soft. And it is woven. I don't know if you can see that. You can see it does, does have a grain line. So you want to make sure that... It lines up kind of with the lining of your t-shirt, which a t-shirt is, it is woven. It's um, just, it's a knit and it's going to be essentially in the same direction as your shirt. You don't want to go on an angle like this, but this t-shirt is the right way. All right, and I don't think I had a wrong or right side. No, because this was tie-dyed. Since this was a tie-dyed shirt, there's really no wrong side of the shirt. So that is beneficial on my part. If you have a t-shirt with lettering, a uh, screen print, um, make sure you put it on the correct side. As well as with screen printing, you will want to make sure you have like a pressing paper on the other side. So you can see it kind of, I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. I'll just trim that off, it's fine. Cause this is a little bit bigger than 18. So I've laid it out on here and we're going to press it on high heat. And it says press and hold for approximately 10 to 12 seconds. 
And this is going to take just a minute because we got to hold it for a little bit and then we got to repeat by lifting the iron to a new area and pressing. And I hope the time change wasn't an issue for anybody on here. Um, we're starting just a little bit later. Uh, I am a mom. I am also a Girl Scout leader. So I had uh, a meeting tonight and it went to a specific time. And I didn't want to have to feel like I got had to rush home. So I had a, I had a good 20 minutes from getting home till this starting, which... I don't know. I like to decompress before I, I do anything and just make sure, get out of all the ducks in a row, make sure everything's, everything's good. And just for fun, while I'm pressing here, because it's going to take another minute, I'm going to show you what we did tonight. I'm really proud of my girls. They, uh, they did a really good job. Um, we're doing jewelry making and they had to learn about a, another culture and uh, they chose Native American beading. So they got to learn how to do the loom and this is what they did. And I'm really proud of them because they all picked up on it really quickly. I was afraid it was going to be challenged, but they did a great job and they're nine and 10 year olds. Just see if this is fused. I wasn't really counting in my head. Looks like it. Okay. All right. So now that we got that fused, and it's sorry my workspace, my camera can only be so far away from my workspace. So it's this is a bigger project. Actually, I'm gonna. That didn't fuse right there. So what we're going to do next is, like I said before, this is not 18 by 18. It's approximately 19 inches across this way, but it is short about four inches this way. So what I did is I cut a piece of fabric and it is tie dyed fabric. This fabric was actually made, was dyed at the same time these shirts were. So it's the exact same dye, same color. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and we're going to stitch this up right here. And if there's any questions, I'm going to take a look at that too. So I'm going to stitch this right here. And while I have it, I'll put this down to medium heat because we don't need high heat again. We'll need medium next. Right, so I did about a three-eighths of an inch seam. I did that because it was a little off up here, but everything's in the seam. And I'm going to press this over. And I forgot to I mention, um, you know, the, the stabilizer for the t-shirt, it's important because, well, as we can see, and I've discussed a little bit, it's a knit and it tends to stretch. So 
the stabilizer helps so it's much easier to sew, especially if you're going to make like a t-shirt quilt. It's highly, highly recommended. Um, otherwise, you'll get bumps and puckers and ask me how I know. Because <laughs> I made a t-shirt. I attempted a t-shirt quilt many, many, many years ago as part of a project in college. And it puckered to no end. I didn't know anything about stabilizers and anything back then. We're talking 12 to 13 years ago. Um, and I did what any art student would do and say I did it on purpose. <laughs> but anyway, so here it is. Here is our front. We're not going to trim it yet. We're going to trim it after we quilt it. But we're going to set this aside for the time being. Uh, because what we're going to do next is we're going to fuse together our um, stitch and sew fleece. So this was from a wide width, which is really awesome. It goes up to 60 inches width, um, and it's by the yard, so as long as you want it. So what you need to do first is I like to trim a straight edge. So I trimmed a straight edge on both of these. Where's my straight? Yep, this is my straight edge. And I want to make sure I have them on the same side. So you can kind of tell there's a little bit more of a smoother side and a little more rough side. So we're going to line those two straight edges up. We're going to butt right up next to each other. They can overlap a little bit too. It's okay. And then we do the straight edge because, yeah, they can overlap, but you don't want like a huge difference in the weight, like the thickness. So then we use this heat and bond easy seam tape, and this can be used for this stitch and sew fleece. I have used it with just regular batting. It's great. This requires medium heat. And the only thing you have to do is just kind of measure out to where you need it. And I'm gonna cut it by my scissors. And it does say to use like a pressing cloth or you can use pressing paper. disposal I have some fabric we're going to use as a pressing cloth so this is what I have sitting next to me so I'm going to put this over top and I'm going to press to fuse it and I have it on medium setting and it's about 10 to 15 seconds pressure You do over here and over here, just a little bit longer. So we now have our piece of material to go in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer, make our sandwich. And as you can see, this is a little bit bigger. I like to make my pieces a little bigger so I know they're going to fit. So 
we're going to use the basting spray that I showed you earlier to baste this together. You should spray it about 12 inches away from your thing, your project. Short bursts. So now we'll need to put on our backing. Now the backing for your pillow can be whatever you want. It can be a big piece of scrap. For me, it's this piece of material that I have laying around. Um, doesn't even match it, but you know what? You won't even see it because it's gonna be inside. And then we're going to layer this on top of here and we're going to baste it with the spray again. And with your basting spray and any of the sprays, um, I'll do it later, but you always wanna finish by turning it upside down and doing your last spurts that way. That way you clear the nozzle and it, if you don't use it for a while, it doesn't um, clog it up. So, All right, so now we have it basted. This might be the longest part where I'm sitting, not talking. <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick quilt. Um, just a couple lines this way and a couple lines this way. I don't want to overtake the feel of this soft um, t-shirt. So I'm gonna go over, make sure this is nice and flat, go over and do a quick quilt. I am grabbing my tool that helps me keep even lines. So that's what I was grabbing in case you were curious.
now that I got it quilted, I'm just going to do these lines here. Um, I am going to go over. You won't see me for a minute because I don't have a camera set up there. I'm going to trim this to 18 inches by 18 inches. You'll hear me though. <laughs> trimmed. Uh, we can set this aside for now. We'll get back to it in a minute. We need to create our back panels. So in the description and the materials, it tells you you need two panels that are 18 by 13 inches. And I have these two right here. Some more very colorful fabric. These are going to be on my daughter's bed. And as I told you, she loves tie dye. So what we need to do is we need to create like a little hem. So on the the 18 inch side, we're gonna fold it over and fold it over again and press it. Uh, you can just eyeball it uh, about three eighths of an inch. I mean, there's plenty of, of room, so you don't have to make it super tiny. Mine are anywhere from about three eighths of an inch to half an inch. And then we'll fold it over one more time. And press it. We're going to do it to the other one. So I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch and a personal preference. I like to do a double top stitch. It's just personal preference of mine. See it here. I just like the way it looks. So I'm going to do that. Thank you. 
we have our two back panels. Just gonna give it a little press. All right. So now is assembly time. So when assembling a pillow such as this, and then really this tutorial can kind of go towards any 18 inch pillow cover. Uh, we're just adding the effect of having a really soft jersey t-shirt. Um, but take these same principles and you can do it with just a completely plain quilting fabric. So determine the direction of your pillow that we're going to do it this way. And you're going to want to put your pieces right sides together. So right now, mine are not like that. I'm trying to move it so you can kind of see. Again, sorry. I'm working on a big piece. So we're going to put it right sides together. We're going to line it up. And we're going to start clipping. And I got a fun thing we're going to do. Because if you've ever made a pillow, and you, and you don't do this next step, you may notice that if you ever had a pillow where there's like the, the corners are like empty, there's no pillow in it, and they're very pointy. Well, we're gonna avoid that tonight. I'm gonna show you um, a template from So Sweetness. We're gonna put this one on top. See, right sides together. I am going to clip right here because that's where my other one is because we're going to want to definitely reinforce the high stress points because when you take the pillow cases off to wash them, this will be where it has the most stress. I'm going to add more clips in a minute, but before I do that, I have a link on the supplies page on the blog to this. So this is a, a template from So Sweetness for a tapered corner. And she has two different sizes, but we're going to use the big one you know, for pillows. And what it does is you, instead of sewing directly on your typical corner, you sew on an angle and it eliminates this much extra fabric in your corners and makes it a more filled pillow and without those weird puckery corners. So if you like those, don't worry about this. But if you're thinking you might want to try and have tapered corners, you can print this off and try it for yourself. So I already have mine cut. I'm looking for a pen. There we go. And so each side will be a little different. This one, I turn it this way and I line up those two dots or those two corners right there and there. And then I just, and you can trim this if you want. So you know where to sew. I'm going to trim after I sew. So what I'll do is I'll sew along here and then I'll angle it out and finish sewing. So we're going to do that to all four corners. I'm going to add a few more clips after I draw it. And when I turn to these two corners, I will turn the template. Or I guess Doesn't really matter. You can have it either direction. So what we're going to do now 
is we're going to sew this all together. I like to do a 3 8 inch to a half inch seam. Um, your 18 inch pillow form is 18 inches, but you want it to be snug. You don't want it to be loose in the pillowcase. So typically you'll see any most pillow um, patterns that I've ever seen and the ones I've written, you almost want your pillow form once it's finished to be 17 inches square. So slightly smaller so that you have a fuller pillow and it doesn't feel like it's swimming around in the pillowcase. So we're going to do about three eighths of an inch to a half inch seam allowance. And we'll do that all the way around and we will reinforce right here and reinforce right here our high stress points. Right. So I'm going to trim these corners and we'll turn it right side out.
and you can see my pieces shifted. It happens, but because of that 3 eighths to a half inch seam, it won't matter. If you really don't want it to shift, add more pins or clips. That helps. Now I don't have another pillow form to put this in. So we'll just have to stare at it in awe without the pillow form. But let me just turn it right side out. And these are nice because they're super soft and you want to lay your head on them, but that gets things dirty and you can just easily take it off and clean it. All right, so you can kind of see, you kind of see it kind of, I don't know if you can see that. It, it creates like a rounded shape almost that kind of goes out and that's that tapered tapered effect. All right, there's the back and there's the front. I don't know if I can, nope, I can't make it any smaller. <laughs> I was trying to see if I could zoom out, but I can see if I can show you on the other, on the computer screen. But anyway, that's our live tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. My daughter's going to enjoy now having two pillows on her bed with her t-shirt that she made. And uh, I'm gonna go check the comments, see if there's any questions. I'll bring this over and I'll make it a full screen over there so we can show the whole thing. Full screen. <laughs> full screen. Here it is. And here's the one that's already in the pillow. You can see how it, the pillow fills it out. It doesn't have like these pointy corners. It doesn't have the pointy ears. I just want to, I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> Falls on the floor and if your floor is like mine, it's got pieces of string and fabric everywhere. Should probably vacuum more often. I'll keep the live going for a few more minutes. If anybody has any questions that we can answer, any suggestions, I have. Uh, I kind of know what I'm doing next month, but if you have a suggestion on a product or a type of project you want to see, I would love suggestions. And don't forget, um, we are all on Facebook. We have a new new block of the month coming out in a couple days, as well as a project. It is super fun. My five-year-old loves it. And it is a scrap buster. So get excited for that. Who doesn't love to use up scraps? All right, well, once again, thank you all for joining me. Um, I'm excited you're here. Tell your other quilty friends about it. I'd love to see more faces. Um, hopefully the time change wasn't an issue. I know it, it might help our West Coast friends, our East Coast friends, where I'm at. Um, it's a little late, but no big deal. But our West Coast and Mountain Time friends, this might help uh, with the time change. Uh, we'll see you next month. Possibly it might be the same time. We just have I just have to play by ear on how... Uh, tonight's went and um, the project we're going to do. So anyway, thank you all again.
and have a great night. Bye.